for a complex number given in Cartesian form, uh, complex conjugate is the one, I already said this once, here's the formal definition again for you. Complex conjugate is the one where you alter the sign of the imaginary part to the opposite one. That's something we call complex conjugate. The interesting thing about the complex conjugate, something worth remembering every time, is that if you multiply complex number with its complex conjugate, you always come up with the sum of the squares of the real and imaginary part. Now, this suggests actually what is called the geometrical representation for the complex numbers. When you take the real and imaginary part of a complex number and you treat them as coordinates of two-dimensional vector, and you picture this vector on your plane. So, for instance, here, this blue vector, you may think of this vector as a representation for the z, if this is the A and this is a B. Oops. And this is B. In that case, of course, this product, under these geometrical interpretations, this product returns the square of the length of, your co of the vector representing your complex number. And that is something we have a special name for. We call it the modulus of a complex number. Well, square of the modulus, to be precise. So the modulus of a complex number this is just the sum of the squares under the square root, or in terms of the complex conjugate, it's a root of the product like this. Geometrically, modulus of a complex number is exactly the length of the vector representing your complex number on the plane, on a two-dimensional plane like this. Now, because now with, well, if you think of a complex number as vectors, uh, you can also associate another geometrical parameter attached to a complex number, which is less... Uh, less straightforward than the modulus, it's the angle, this angle, which comes from the positive direction of the x-axis and goes all the way to the vector itself. In complex number terms, we call this the argument of the complex number. And formal definition for this argument, uh, we write this like this, arg of z with capital A. So, I mean, if you measure your angle from the positive direction of the x-axis and you never go larger than pi or 180 degrees, either positive or negative, if you put these extra constraints on your argument, then the symbol which denotes that argument is, starts like this with the capital A, we call it the principal argument. And the formal definition of this goes like this. It's either arc cos of the expression like this, in case you have the imaginary part positive, or negative arc cos like this, in case you have the imaginary part negative. So if your vector goes on this side, on the, in the upper half plane, this is a value which delivers a, the argument. If your vector goes in the bottom half plane, that is the value which will deliver your argument. Like I said, if you define the argument, this angle of your vector with this particular formula, that's the formal standard definition of that argument, uh, your argument will always be within these ranges, your argument, and the, we have a special name for this, for, for this, cho uh, for this way chosen argument, we call it the principal argument. Now, from the elementary trigonometry, from the elementary trigonometry, given that this is the angle, if I call this, let me just call this alpha, if I call the argument alpha, so this, is, this will be alpha, from the elementary trigonometry, you can say that then this one will be the modulus of your z number times cos alpha. From the, this is just the elementary trigonometric observation. If you, when you have a triangle like this, the, this side of this triangle, it's the length of the hypotenuse times the cos of the angle adjacent to the side of the triangle. And b will be, in that case, equal to the absolute value z times sine alpha. So if you replace if you replace your a and b in here with these values, you will come up with something which is called the trigonometric form of the complex number. And that is something which is very powerful. I mean, it gives you very powerful methods, especially when it comes to computing powers and roots of complex numbers. Uh, yeah, I will actually have further discussion of the trigonometric forms and exponential forms on the next slide. Uh, I want to close this one. So before I do that, let me ask you this. Do you have any questions in relation to this very simple, simple slide? 